your guy on a horse. Guy on a horse, yes, a sort of a equestrian warrior statue from Vienna. I thought, why not use something from Vienna? And I'm sure those sort of statues you find all over the place. Um, I do realize that the bottom view of the horse can be a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> so we'll see how that ends. <laughs> um, interesting in any way. So I thought what I'd, what I'd like to do is, let me make sure that I see what, I'm, what you see at the moment. Okay, what I'd like to do is reduce my palette to two colors, to, to sort of warm, one warm and one cool, and a mixture of those, and maybe a little bit of white, a little bit of gouache. And so translate what we see into, the, into those two colors, I'll start with doing some drawing and then I'll use some color on, on that. And maybe I'll alter it with a little bit of fussing around with other tools in the end, but that's the sort of main thing. So I think a lot of times we find a lot of, we can get a lot of freedom by restricting our, our tools, less choices. And the fewer colors you use or the fewer colors we use in general, the more harmonious things will be, I find. And so that's that taken care of straight away. Um, Definitely agree there. Yes, so I was like, preach. preach it's, not it. the only, it's not the only strategy, but it's one of the strategies for sure. So I'll start with the with a drawing and I'll start with a with a pen, a sort of water soluble pen but well it stays it stays permanent while it's on but it, once you wet it you can get really dark um lines mm. later on as well so i just discovered that so i'd like to give it a whirl today and um trying to get the statue in a, in a combination of contour drawing and thinking about the structure as well a little bit and i'll i'll do a very direct way of drawing so i'll I will run into problems. I things will get out of proportion at times. And I will enhance that a little bit if I find an opportunity to make it more interesting. So I will push certain shapes to to my liking when I see the opportunity arise. So let's see. I'll start with the head of the guy and take it from there. So straight away we'll have to, because we're looking from the bottom up, we'll have to be careful that we have those overlaps. And we put those in properly. So we have the shoulder overlapping quite a bit of the face. And that will help with um, communicating that we're looking from the bottom up. So I'm just working my way along. Uh, so you are using a water soluble. Uh, um... So it is, it is sort of it gets very dark when you go into 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 wet or when you wet it or when you get into a moist field, then it gets very dark. So I'll okay. see, I can show you that. So this is the normal line, but if I go into the water and moist it a little bit, it can get very dark. Okay. Okay, but this will not dissolve. Right? That's at least mm -hmm. what I hope. We'll see. If that does dissolve as I draw, it will get really interesting in those 20 minutes. We'll see. Okay. Thank you. I'm not playing for it, so but it might happen. Sort of a way of getting a different, quite a range of line with one tool, which is sort of nice. Yeah. So you purposefully draw in wet, wet areas to get the extra dark line? Later on, when I want to darken things, I, I will do that, I think. Okay. When I want to have certain accents or certain things that are not, that I don't have enough focus, then I can use that to sort of give a little bit of extra punch in that area without disintegrating with, by using a different tool. Sometimes it can disconnect a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but that's definitely a way of keeping mm. it together. I'm um, playing with that a little bit and a better place to play than at a demo, right? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> that's, that's what the doctor recommends, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got to be careful about the 
head of the horse. That's one of the most important bits. Are you uh, good at drawing horses? <laughs> no, not yet. But, um... <laughs> not yet, but I will be in 20 minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, not, not really. I I'm, just, not Western, uh, like, I'm not a Western looking comic at, guy. Yeah, looking at, at this uh, statue just like reminded me that I went through a very deep horse drawing phase in my teenage years. <laughs> Horse oh creature. yeah, I know. I, yeah, yeah, and I, and I haven't drawn a horse since, I guess. The knowledge so I'll push, is I'll you. push the head. I'll purposefully make the head larger because I, I like things when they get a little funny, a little wonky, and when I can do that on purpose, um, I'll I'll do that because I think I want to be entertained by my drawing. <laughs> Solid choice. Okay. And if you, I feel like if you draw something and you're not enjoying the process, you might as well not do it. But oh, preach. So true. Um, so I always feel like too many of us think there's certain things that we should draw and then we don't care about them. And I think that's, a, that's not worth it. Well put. So I like that head. So we'll see. Try to keep my pen, uh, my pencil on the paper as much as I can. That sort of keeps the line more connected and keeps it more coherent, the whole thing, um, for better or worse. Okay. Do you know who's depicted here? Like who who's the dude on the horse? Uh, I was I was thinking someone's gonna ask me, and I. <laughs> you no, are. it's okay and not to know. No, I like, looked. It's... I I looked it up. It's Prince Eugene, and he was one of the um, warriors for the Habsburg Empire, and apparently he was quite good at what he did and got a statue. Yeah. Now there's the funny thing that there's two statues that are on opposite on opposite sides of that place where they stand on the Heldenplatz. And this statue um, is mounted by the hind legs and also with the with the tail, whereas the one opposite only rests on its hind on its hind legs. So there's some rumor that the sculptor of the horse of the statue that only rests on the hind legs used to be perhaps of higher quality, but Ooh. You see, a little bit of extra gossip. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We're always here for that. Yes. <laughs> so I actually quite like statues because, um, first of all, a lot of times they have this sad fate of just ending up full with um bird poo. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Real. But there is so much, I mean, the, you know, you can always wonder why is that person there? What's, what are they doing there? What's the connection to the place? So it can help to really tell a story. Um, whether a real one or one that you contemplate. Okay. So let's speed up a little, a little less chatting. Mm -hmm. Well, the silhouette is looking great. Ooh, good in intel in the chat. Um, Manish says, a horse statue with legs raised in the air is said to signify the rider was killed in battle. Um, that sounds, I like, I like the idea of that. I like the drama of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for the participants, we are just sharing Oliver's desk. So you have to open the reference photo on your own screen. And there's links in the chat. 
Okay, so what do we do? That's always a bit annoying in Zoom that like the chat gets lost really easily if you uh, come in later to the Zoom room. But yeah, no way around it. Yeah, I really wish there was okay. a way to in a message. Yeah. yeah. But we can just keep posting the link too. Yeah. It's easy. Okay. You gave the horse a skinny bum. I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very, um, very round in this, in the statue. Also, yeah, it's but it's also dangerous to, to draw a horse with a very round bum. <laughs> and yeah. the only thing you see is the bum and not the statue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very wise. This is a horse girl knowledge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's add some color oh i'm excited to see how the that graffiti pencil thing will react now not, not doing too much yeah but it, it does darken but without muddying the pink much yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes it does more sometimes it does less um Ah, here it does more because I just applied it, I guess. Hmm. And what colors are you using? Um, so there are two random colors from my drawer. Brilliant pink and Scheveningen blue deep, old Holland, both of those. Um, I was mainly selecting sort of a warm and cool and and They are not. They are not too different in. Well, they are not too extreme on the spectrum of. Well, I have one that's a little, perhaps also a little, that has the potential to go a little darker as well. They're both very light. Then. Is a really nice. There's heat. also another question. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. Um, if you shortened your brush on purpose. I do. Uh, I did because then it can into this bag into this pack and this is sort of where I put all my stuff usually. Oh okay. Nice. So and for sketching I don't need a long handle. That's true. Those are mixing really nicely. They are, yeah. Nice contrast. So I'm thinking a little bit, um, put the warm one perhaps a little bit further up towards this, towards the light and the cool one further down, but not strictly, so to have to not have it be too boring. Um, This is sort of the first pass, and then we'll see how much time we have and how much we can work on it. <clears throat> but this undulation of warm and cool, I think even with just two colors, it makes for quite interesting um, effects by just filling in the silhouette with that and then also having the having the, the value, the light and dark um, on top. It makes for a nice, it's for a nice effect, I think. Yeah, I always really admire that about your sketches that you like can see, like it seems like you um, are really good at choosing like a limited color palette that can be abstract or like with a warm and cool scheme. Um, and it always yeah. like, it's just so atmospheric and I really love that approach and working with limited palette and maybe not supernatural color, but when I use watercolor and have the chance to like mix things, I can never stick to it. Mm -hmm. Like I, if I have a watercolor box, I will use all the colors. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think it's because I'm a little. I mean, I mean, speaking of cool color palettes and um, atmospheric views and that sort of thing. I mean, you're the 
good a person to ask about that. Um, my my go to place with watercolor is I'm scared of color, so I need to limit myself because otherwise I sort of I'm losing it. You know, it sort of it adds up as fruit fruit basket. In no one, no one would guess that looking at what you do that you're scared of color. Well, you know, I don't I know if I can believe because that. whatever I do, it it will be fine. So this is the, this yeah. is one strategy. Um, yeah. There is others, and um, but I'm I am of all the, of the whole process of of sketching and drawing. Well, the the color choice is the is the one I have most respect of. You can really do a lot with two or three colors. Make sure it doesn't get so pasted on. Hmm. Yeah. What do you mean by pasted on? Well, cut and paste. Like, you know, there's this whole silhouette on the white, um, on the white background, and that can look a little bit um well, cut and pasty. And so I forgot to sort of, usually a lot of times I will have a sort of first wash that covers the whole thing with one color. And I didn't here. So got to work that in now a little bit. Okay, so we've got something down and now it's about getting darker in certain areas and oops, time is running, I guess, huh? I think we're in minutes like 18 or 19, but like, mm -hmm. yeah, we can do a couple more minutes, no worries. Okay, let's get the stuff that's most important. So I think most important, we have a little bit of this undulation of color. We have warms mainly up where the areas are hit by the sun which is warmer, and then cooler areas rather where the form turns under, but not strictly, so not have it sort of too, too, too obviously just like that, have a little bit of mixtures going on. And now I'm focusing a little bit more on the darker areas as well to make sure that the form reads a little bit more even the whole thing turns where it doesn't quite yet. And that helps to make give it give it solidity and give it give it its um, presence in the space. And then we'll go in with some other things to pop it up a little. We have time. So yeah. I think a good a good rule of thumb that I usually tell people is make a mess and clean it up. <laughs> love that <laughs> yeah great advice because yeah. usually i think too... we call it like i call it like let the like having to work through the ugly phase like yeah. 80 percent of, of of a drawing is like working with an ugly stage of a sketch yeah that you hopefully like that it hopefully comes together yeah I actually... yeah yeah It usually comes together if you just are strong enough to not give up during the ugly phase. Yeah, trust the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. The thing that I hate about watercolor is that you have to wait for it to dry, which oh, is yeah. not my strong part. <laughs> Are you that's not like. patient? No, I like that's why I like drawing a lot because you can just keep going, keep going, keep going, and yeah. do it sort of like that, 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 Yeah. And that that sort of breaks the breaks the flow, and I I hate that. Do you ever use watercolor pencils? Yeah, but um, I don't. I don't really. I mean, I. I only use them to 
transition from line to shape, but not really to use them exclusively. I don't I don't know how to make them work for me in that way. So let's okay, I would fuss around here some more, but let me show you a few more things perhaps. Um first of all, let's deepen some of those dark areas with that dark. that wetted pen, um, graphite. Ooh, that's a nice oh, spot blacks. Nice. Nice, because it really helps with the definition. Everything that was sort of more uniform, now it's sort of, you know, boom, where to look. A little focus, yeah. Yeah, and yet you sort of, it fits in nicely. It sort of goes together. Um, and then... Um, someone in the chat is wondering what the name of the pencil is you're drawing with. Um, it's Krita Colors Aqua Monolith. I um, I can put it. I can write it in the chat. That's maybe yeah. easier. So a lot of times I use like some permanent black lines straight away, but I'm warming up to this as well as to have it in my repertoire. So. Uh, it's a little tangent that creeped in here. Yes, they do. They do. These vicious tangents. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. good. Always creeping in. <laughs> okay, let's also add, let's see. Let's also add some acrylic marker. Or oh, I like the... I like, I don't like to keep lights. I'm bad at that. I sort of, in the spirit of making a mess and then cleaning it up, I'm not a sort of very protective, oh, let's walk around this carefully. I feel like this is sort of killing the flow. But um, I quite like the those acrylic markers to go over and add some lights back on top. And they also have a sort of watercolor effect, I feel, because they also sort of... Um, they're also a little bit translucent. You can still see through a little bit if you don't don't over yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. well that's also like that's not a white one is it that's like a beige one right no, this or is, is ivory it... yes mm -hmm. ivory yeah so i'm adding some of the the lights on top and also you can sort of um destroy the line again and sort of have this this fade out look, this lost edges. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nice. So I feel they work together, it works together pretty nice for me. Yes, I'm always looking for ways to combine watercolor and acrylic marker. Yeah. Which is not the most obvious combination, but. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like watercolor for the sort of wishy washy moving into each other and making its mess sort of thing. Yeah. But then, as you know, I'm sure you know better than I, um, those sort of acrylic markers, they, I, they, have, they have a lot of punch and you can get discrete areas down and they have a certain value, a certain color. There's no, there's no messing about. You, you get, you know what you get. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> so. But I also use, in the interest of showing you a few things, since this is a demo, I also use other markers. I also use um, just felt tip markers. Um, and they can also yeah. add. Usually I feel that watercolor can get, one of the dangers of watercolor, either you get this fruit basket and get all sorts of colors all, all over the place. Or <laughs> the fruit you, basket, <laughs> nice. But if you restrict yourself, as I try to do, then everything can get into sort of this eternal autumn. You know, it's everything is sort of no real color anywhere, no real saturation anymore anywhere. 
And for little areas of high saturation, I quite like those um, felt tip markers as well. So usually if you just add a little bit, you can, you get a lot of, um, you know, this whole area now doesn't look as black anymore just because of this little high saturated dark black. Uh, yeah, like a, a, like a dark spot that's being like supported by like a color spot. Exactly. And it just gives the yeah. eye to lock something to to like grab onto, you know? Yeah. It yeah. It sort of blends in nicely. Um doesn't destroy the harmony, but gives it gives it some So I drew mm -hmm. along with you and my horse looks very angry. <laughs> <laughs> angry horse my horse is about to unseat that guy <laughs> so just remember what i've done is i used those two colors a warm and a cool watercolor on top of a basic pencil drawing you can i use that water soluble pencil um that allowed me to go back in a little darker in the in the end and then now i'm throwing a lot of different things on it but they are not mission critical, so to speak. If you have them, if you don't have them, they just, you know, I just push, put them out for a little, for a little extra effect. The main um, work was done by those, by those two, by those tools that I mentioned. I also like those um, gray markers, actually. Um, those Tombow markers, because I feel like, just as a little bit of a touch of color with with the felt tip markers can um can make a boring area more vibrant by adding saturation and color too vibrant or too too yeah too vibrant colors can be toned down a little bit by adding a little bit of a gray over it so yeah. you have this you have these two directions to tune your your sketch towards that is some great insight yes by the way, we are like in minute, uh, let me check, 28 now. Yeah, I mean, I can I can stop and I can keep going. It's sort of, I've done the important <laughs> part and I can, you know, I can. But, but maybe that's an interesting last question for you to answer. When, when like a very famous question yeah. with probably no good answer, but how, how do you know when to stop? Yes. So a good place to start is when you're not solving any more problems when it suddenly becomes easy and you feel like now there's the time to to reward yourself by just pushing paint around unfortunately that is usually the time when you should have stopped yeah <laughs> and that's why it's so hard to stop because suddenly it feels like a pleasure and it's so easy and you know what you're doing yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know you're safe do a little yeah. here do a little there um Whereas earlier you're sort of uneasy and it's like, oh, this doesn't work and this, isn't, this doesn't quite look right. And so you're solving problems. And then once you don't solve any more problems, it's probably time to stop. Yeah. <laughs> That's good advice. Very wise. Yeah. Could you hold up your image a bit closer to the camera so that we can like see maybe close up? Mm. Nice. Fun. I think like it's super interesting, like the acrylic marker, like it looks like some kind of cloud. I, I don't know, it gives it kind of like yeah. a speed, like it's about to like yeah, jump off and the pedestal. Yeah, it does. And it's because you, you sort of can do this, you lose the you you lose the lines. And yeah. It looks like it's sort of the, the color fades. So so now looking at it, I look mainly at the reference and not at, not at the not at the image. Now that I look at it with a little bit of a distance, I would resolve more things here to make sure that this sort of reads better. Um, and probably go a little bit darker in certain areas down here, and then tweak around some of the smaller shapes that um, that I have. They're a little they're a little crude for me, um, but that's okay. So this is sort of my analytical analytical eye on it now, I guess. Any any questions about the process? I feel that's more important than the ultimate outcome that I have produced. Mm, I like that. 
Um, well, we can keep talking about your strategies in the, the next two yeah. drawings as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll pass these comments along to Oliver. So thank you for your demo. Thank you so much. Good job. Good. Yay. <laughs> Yay.